Hello everyone, it's been a long time. How you all doing? Welcome to another escapement show. I've got on my left, on your right, uh, Abdul, our watches with this great Hi, channel. Our watches, make sure you're all subscribed to that. Some great stuff has been knocking out recently. We've got JCB, the man. Cheers, Hi. boys. Thomas Abdul, JQH, good to see you boys. Been a while. Cheers. Yeah, likewise. See you, buddy. What are um, you drinking? JQH. I'm drinking a uh, drinking an Australian beer called uh, Mountain Mountain Goat beer. Uh, it used to be called Mountain Goat, now it's just called Goat. They dropped okay. the mountain. <laughs> They're drinking a it's it's like thirty I think it was thirty-three here today. It's gonna be thirty-seven, so our summer is uh it's, it's hit late so it's coming on it's coming on strong now so we're getting some nice warm beer yeah, drinking you're, weather you, you're talking you're talking summer and we are freezing our asses off here <laughs> yeah. jonathan joining us as you can hear yeah uh, how you doing jonathan doing well all good all good uh i hope that that you guys are doing well i wanted at the beginning of, of the show i wanted to uh, to put a shout out to our friend muhammad ali who finally got his pepsi yesterday yeah. oh congrats. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. congratulations I'm... muhammad ali absolutely super yeah. happy for him great yeah, congrats so cool. say hello to a few of the audience who got jamie in the house release the hey, house Watch Apprentice saying, let's go. Uh, Chili Badger, ground control, some made ginger tom. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, only <we> switched on. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up, guys, if you enjoy the shit, what we're doing. Yeah, by all means, give us a thumbs up. Uh, Russell, morning watch nutters. Good to see you, Russell. Hey, awesome. Yeah, good to see you all. Cheers, everyone in the chat. Good to see you, boys. Kevin hey, Hawthorne, as always. Good morning from Lake Kevin. John, Florida. I bet you're up early in the morning, and uh, thank you for joining us. So, uh, yeah, we we did it. With our last show was um, the Calendar Watch show, and uh, I thought I'd follow on from thought I'd follow on from a bit of a. The calendar watch theme with something which is we saw on some of the calendars and it's a bit calendar related really which was moon phases and um the moon phase was somewhat was once a somewhat practical complication and is today more of a, a not to tradition it's more than that it can be visual poetry on the wrist and more wow. so where did you find that line <laughs> also a reminder that we're part of a larger universe okay okay we're going to look at a few different styles of moon phase watch and i wanted to start with a brand that is Be run by our friends Thomas, Thomas Martin, who are based in ireland and i just stopped we'll do a wristwatch check first uh because I'm wearing one of their watches. So I'm wearing my Sidereus watches, Noth watch. This is a really nice uh, watch here. It's uh, the Noth watch. It's on a, a Magon Tweed strap. Where's the moon face, Thomas? Where's the moon face? Yeah, they do moon face watch, which I'm going to pull up. But um, there's no moon face. I, I didn't go for the moon face. I'm, 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 I'm ashamed about. Yeah, the moon face is a signature watch. And uh, as I say, I didn't go for the moon face. But um, I'd like. Do you, I haven't got do, you, do, you, do you even own a watch that has a moon face, Thomas? I was going to say, I haven't got a moon phase in the collection. I'd, I'd really like one. I should have got the moon phase, actually. But but I think JQH probably has. But Abdul, do you have a moon phase in your collection? 
I have a vintage Fortis uh, from my grandfather, really old one, um, like a quartz from the 70s, 34 millimeters. Uh, has like the moon phase with a textured dial, uh, but that's that's the only moon phase, and I don't wear it anymore. Actually, my wife wears it more because it's the small size and the, and the vintage. Mm -hmm. Abdul, wristwatch check. I see what you're wearing. I'm wearing my med. Oh, um, you devil. I love it. Cool. I love yeah. it. I thought the only one that has a little bit of uh, loom on the dial <laughs> that could match a moon phase is this one. Beautiful. Um, yeah. It's cool that it spins around. That's real cool. cool. Yeah, the, the spin is the... You can spend hours spinning though the watch. <laughs> Little yeah. yeah, I've got mine, my Mad Green, Mad One Green coming this year, so I don't know when that'll come. They said the middle of the year, so hopefully not too soon, not too if long. There, if there is anybody with moderating power, please time out or ban Russell for trolling me again uh, with coming about uh, Christopher Ward. <laughs> No, no, wait, no, trolling troll you is what we're here for. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the stream, I'm with you. Thank you I, I didn't get the program. So, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so JCB, oh, uh, what, are you, what are you wearing this today? The, um, this is the, the, the only moon themed watch that I have in my collection is uh, is the moon watch, which I picked up a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, it's uh, look, it's a cheap, you know, little watch, but I, I really like it. It's a cool, fun little piece. It's really light. Um, you know, it's a bit of fun. Uh, it, it, the chronograph is not the best because um, I don't know if you can see on the minutes counter, it doesn't actually have markings for each minute, which is a bit of a oh. fail. Yeah, like it's a bit of a fail actually in terms of being an actual chronograph, but. You know, if you can get past that and just have a bit of fun with it, then uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. You've got to get rid of the the the, the stock the strap. strap. The strap that comes on this is an absolute piece of shit. So I've put it on a, a die model uh, racing strap, which is a brand of strap from uh, from Germany. I think that's your neck of the woods, JQH. Um, really cool strap, actually. So the watch is really cool, nice and light. Um, yeah, fun little piece. We seem to have lost Jonathan for the moment, but I'm sure he'll be back. Yeah, I think uh, the, this, this watch was never made to be used as a chronograph, because I, I think if you used it like a couple of days in a row in a chronograph, it will stop working. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I use it because, I mean, I like, you know, I like timing my steaks and when yeah. I've got lasagna in the oven and just shit like that. I'm always trying to, you know, get some function out of it. But um, I was timing a steak the first time I got it. I pressed the button, chopped a steak on the on the on the fry pan, and I pressed the button, and I'm like, "What the hell? I can't count the minutes. I've got five minute blocks. I'm gonna work." And my brain blew up. I'm like, "What the hell?" <laughs> so yeah, no one. I mean, that's no one even like you said. There's all these reviews of the Moon Swatch online, and no one has really picked up that thing. I think it's because no one gives a shit, right? Like people aren't yeah. buying it to yeah. actually use it as a chrono. It's just they just want the time yeah. and they want the look. look. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They just want some yeah, fun. Yeah. This is marketed for, you know, 18 to 25 year olds or something or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. I think. So, you know, actual watch nerds like me sort of will be the only ones that will freak out about it. But yeah, besides that, it's cool. Oh, Jonathan. Oh. Oh. Wrong button. Look oh, at yeah. that. Oh, Very cool. Langomatic. <laughs> Uh, now that's the shot. Yeah. The size oh. is good. Oh, everything is just so good. It's perfect, you, know, yeah. you have to be the biggest one to knock us out of the park, don't you? <laughs> oh, look at that. Wow. Pretty cool. Boom. Oh, that's really nice as well. And the moon phase two on this one? Yeah. Langer one moon phase. One moon phase. That's yeah. sick, man. So I good. like the moon phase on this one more because because it's just three functions and it just gives it its like a uh, piece yeah. of the pie. Yeah, I was thinking that like before 
well, like what I the, the watches that I like with moon phases are perpetual calendars. And when you look at them, the, the, the moon phase is just sort of thrown in. It's mm -hmm. almost like like an afterthought. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's almost like, oh, we're getting all these complications in. Why not let's just throw in a moon phase? And it sort of gets lost in the mix a little bit. But, exactly. yeah, I think you're right, Abdul. On this one, it's a bit more prominent. And it's, you know. You just see the there on, small, the on the small dial, on the second dial. It's just uh, it's it's cool, man. It's so yeah, good. It's so gorgeous. Yeah. That's a beauty, Jonathan. It's a great two-piece Langer combo you got there jqh really nice really nice ah the moon phase is, uh, is, is moving <laughs> yeah when i was reviewing this uh christopher ward uh, moon phase i had uh, pretty hard time setting the moon to the right moon phase to the day that would be really interesting to know jonathan how do you do this how, how do you set the the moon phase to the to the correct day wow look at that so nice Yeah, and the black uh, with the white gold on the lange is just fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, blue sky with the gold sun. Walter Prince is asking, does JQH like Langan Son? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> not, not so much, not so much. <laughs> yeah, so. Good morning, Chris. Hope you're doing well. We've got Hi, Chris. Chris in the audience. Show us the moon phase on the perpetual uh, piggy. Let's get a look at that one as well. Ah, thanks, Russ. Uh, Russ answered my question about setting the, the the moon phase. You always set to a new moon and then advance the number of days, plus or minus. Mark, how are you doing? Good to see you. Lutropetic what Mark? It's uh, check out his channel, Lutropetic Watch Talk. Um. Hey. He's, he's got a great channel. He does a stream every Sunday uh, about 3 um, p.m. GMT. Um, I think that's about 10 p.m. Eastern Time, USA. Uh, been maybe a bit late for Australia, but um, it's a great little stream. Um, I'll see if I can drop a link to his channel. Um, far out that watch is nice, man. Jesus, that's a killer piece. Yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, and I, and I think is the moon phase sub dial bigger on the Langer one than on the perpetual calendar, right? Or is it the same size? I reckon it is. I reckon it is. Yeah. It looks a bit bigger. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Hard to tell. It's very hard to tell, right? Mm, yeah, it is a bit hard to tell. But see how on this one, on the main dial, it's got that sector piece. Mm -hmm. with the roman numeral that, that's that's different to the regular langer one which is sort of more flat so this one's got that little bit extra bit of a pop with that sector dial mm. piece on it I'm, I'm pretty sure that's loomed as well right yeah 
Ja. Nah, fuck, man. Let's go. Oops, it's disappeared. Yeah, I'll just drop the link to Lucha Betting Mark's uh, channel. And if you can, if you can check that out, it's a great show. He's uh, subscribed to him, and he's got a great little channel, and uh, it's growing. And uh, yeah, great watch talk on a Sunday afternoon, guys. And um, well, check it out. Well, welcome, uh, Lucha Betting as well. Oh, we're carrying on with the langer. Beautiful watches, says Jonathan. Higgy, do you know you can't? We can't hear you at the moment. I'm not sure. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Now, now you can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Now you can hear. Me. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to show you how to set up uh, the calendar and, and the moon phase. Uh, mm -hmm. I've already started. I've already started. First of all, I'm checking uh, if the date changes. So I had the uh, date changing to 31. And at the moment, I'm knowing, uh, I know that I'm at 6 o'clock in the morning. So then I'm setting the date. And then I manually move over because today is the 3rd. So I manually move over midnight to have the calendar mm -hmm. change. And it should change now at midnight. So here we go. Okay, now it's the third. Mm -hmm. Today is the third. So the present time is 10 to 1. So what I have to do is now go over one o'clock because that is in the night. Because it's one o'clock in the noon at the moment in Germany. So it's 10 to one. But now it's difficult because we are, we are at noon and I know that at noon the moon phase changes. So what I do is I put it at nine o'clock in the morning and now I set the moon phase at first. Because otherwise, I may damage the watch. Oh, so I'm, okay. I'm, I'm using the little pin that comes with the watch. Here's the hole. Let me see if I can hit it while looking at the camera. No, of course not. Okay, now I got it. So what I do now is I move the moon face to full moon. It's almost full moon, but it's not. So now it's full moon. And I think it is today, it is nine days after full moon. So what I do mm -hmm. is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one will change at noon. So now I'm setting the time to 10 to one. And it changed one step further and now the watch is set. Okay. Like that. So now I can wind it up. You can see the power reserve is moving up. And there you go. Moon phase set, date set, time set. Beautiful. Cool. Very cool. Ah, oh, that backside. Three quarter plate oh. with a lot of chatons. So nice. mm. Absolute stunner, Jonathan. Yeah, in my opinion, this is one of the best Langes that they made. And as you can see, I'm a I'm a fan for black dials on Langes. Yeah, yeah, I was just yeah. saying black dials with white gold on Langes is amazing. Yeah, look, look, I'd rather have platinum with black dials, but Lange doesn't do that. Mm. So I had I had this perpetual calendar in platinum with a, oh. with a called Rodine dial. And I was trying for years to get the black dial, but they wouldn't do it. So I consequently, I sold the, pla uh, the, the platinum and bought the white gold. Mm. Gorgeous. There's a, uh, there's a Langer one in platinum with a black dial, Jonathan. That's, that they call it, they nickname it the Darth. You would probably have heard about that one, right? Uh, yes. 
yes, no. yes, yes, it is. But um, yeah, is it dark platinum yeah. or is it white gold? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, plat I'm pretty sure, 199 percent sure it's platinum. And that was, I think, it was a 39 mil version. And then when they increased it to the 41, then they they changed it to mm. white gold. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I will log on my longer. computer. I'll mm. be back in a, in a second. Okay. Cool. Or any more questions from you? No, no, no. About the washes. Okay. Oh, I would, oh sorry. Last so, one he gets Y2K, our good friend Y2K saying, Hey, uh, Y2K. Good evening, gents, and all. We'll try to come on later. I'm a Chinese New Year reunion dinner with the in laws. Have a great time, Y2K, and a happy Chinese New Year to you. Um, happy Chinese New Year, Brian. All the best, my friend. So, yeah, um, I was going to start talking about um, a look at few different styles of move phase watches throughout the stream and uh i wanted to start with a brand run by my friends brian and martin who are based in ireland which is called sidereus watches and uh they're the um brand of watch i'm wearing as i said they make a moon phase and uh the timepieces celebrate the origins of horology and the marking of time in Ireland for over 5,000 years at Brunabonia, which is the earliest farming communities built, of, where the earliest farming communities built vast stone monuments. And I'll just get on to this, bring up their site. Um, they, uh, they, uh, then the time period to celebrate the origins of horology and the marking of time in Ireland for over 5,000 years at Bruna Bonia, where the earliest farming communities built vast stone monuments like Newgrange, North, and Doth to record the sidereal year. So, these are the monuments Newgrange, North, and Doth. And, um, just send Jonathan back in. Yeah, the brand's name Sidereus comes from Sidus, which is Latin for star. And Sidereus is also a reference to the sidereal year, where the time is taken from the sun when observed from the earth to return to the same position in the sky in relation to the stars. The Brunabonia Neolithic Passage tombs dominate the three sites of Newgrange, North and Doth and contain the largest assemblage of megalithic art in Western Europe. The impressive structures are built circa 3500 BC and were used as passage tombs, but were also ceremonial in function as they were built to align the special events of the Earth calendar, such as winter solstice and equinox, which were important dates for farming communities. Newgrange, which is best known of the three monuments, is former burial chamber. However, the tumulus also forms a solar construct and marks the winter solstice for the, when the rising sun is perfectly aligned and shines through the roof box located above the entrance. Just there you can see. Um, to the tumulus. To illuminate the inner chamber located at the end of a long covered passageway. Depending on weather conditions, the chamber, which is normally in darkness throughout the year, is illuminated for exactly 17 minutes. And should weather be bright and sunny, this can be seen down from the 18th to the 23rd of December. Granted, it's not tremendously accurate or portable. It requires a cloud-free morning sky to function correctly. And it is, however, a testament to the knowledge and skill of ancestors and the tangible evidence of the foundations of modern-day horology. A bit like Stonehenge in function, but Newgrange predates Stonehenge. So uh, you can see that they, 
the cases are inspired the case of the watch is inspired by new grange this uh uh structure here and the cases of the watches inspired by that i'll just get to the watches so this is the um moon face they make which i was thinking of buying but didn't buy and the case of the watches as i say take an obvious inspiration from the shape of the new grange and a 44 million diameter using a modified salita sw 280-1 with 38 hours power reserve the orange second hand has a cruciform detail inspired by the inner chamber new grange and limited to 50 pieces, the 2,600 euros, excluding VAT. So what do, you think, what do we think of these? Do we like them? Not like them? We fans? Yeah, it looks okay. Uh, I don't know, about mm. 2,600 euros. Uh, it's a new micro brand and feels a little bit too much for what the specs are. Yeah, uh, but I never had one in my hand, so I cannot uh, give hundred uh, percent on it. But yeah, for me, mm. I, I wouldn't buy it with my money. Yeah, I agree. The price is a bit steep for that one, and I feel like the moon phase is probably a, a bit too close to the um, exactly you know, to the, to the yeah. Yeah. In, up up in the center of the watch. It sort of seems a bit squashed. Um, just the balance is a little bit out with the dial, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're using that's a enough. module that, that is meant for smaller watches, and this is 44 millimeters, yep. and that's no. exactly the problem. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, ha I'm happy that you said it, JCB, so that uh, uh, that way I'm not uh, the always nagging and, uh, <laughs> and uh, negative <laughs> German here. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, this brand, it's, as is my friend's brand, uh, it's good to get some feedback, yeah. The problem is, I, I think he, they will have a hard time to find a, a, a bigger module uh, for this movement. I, I don't know, SUW80, is it a 2824 clone or 2892? I think 2892 it is. Uh, so it will be difficult because the movement is around 30 millimeters. And uh, that is where the movement, uh, where the module must uh, fit. Good evening, mm. Bill. Let's see. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I think it's a the, the movement is smaller than the case, so it does have a space in it. So that's probably why it's cramped up um, like that. As to the date, mm -hmm. the date wheel is closer in than would normally be. Um, so it, because of the smaller movement, then the movement isn't the actual size of the case. Um, everything cl clustered inward. It, it, uh... Yeah, for that for that sort of coin, you know, you want to have the, all those design elements all, all worked out, and 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 do and, you know what I mean? Like you want to be, you want to mm. have something that that ticks all the boxes from from that perspective at least for me yeah. anyway yeah fair enough we'll move on and uh on to one which is uh topical for y2k The Longines Heritage Flagship Moon Phase, Year of the Dragon. And uh, the Chinese New Year gives many companies the chance to release good uh, featuring, to release good featuring, um, goods featuring the uh, 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac. And uh, this year is the Year of the Dragon. And for the first time, Longines are jumping on the bandwagon to release a themed watch in a limited edition of 888 pieces available exclusively in Asia. Uh, eight being a very lucky number in Asia um, for wealth and prosperity. Mm. The watch is a gradient red dial with the colour red being very significant in Chinese culture as it's associated with 
festivities, good luck, wealth, and happiness. And the combination of gold and red is even more auspicious. So, Laurentine interviews the guilt on the elongated applied indices, hands, and their logo and type. And uh, to enhance legibility through the hands, have a strip of superluminaire on them. The heritage using the heritage flagship Moonface model makes a lot of sense from Laurentine since the moon plays an essential role in determining the date of Chinese New Year. And according to Chinese lunisolar calendar, the New Year usually falls on the uh, second new moon after the winter solstice, being uh, between 21st of January and 20th of February. This year, the year of the dragon kicks off on the uh, 10th of February, I believe. Um, the watch is uh, 38.5 mil. And uh, 38.5 mil in thickness, with a thickness of 12.4. Uh, the lugs are very short and straight, and chamfered and polished the top surfaces to match the vessel. And the bush flanks um, are situated uh, six o'clock, and uh, the moon phase very snailed aperture with it framed by a date ring indicated by a golden hand. The golden moon and the stars are set against a blue night sky, and the case back is engraved with a medallion of a dragon's head. Uh, as you'll see on the back there. Underneath the case pack lies a self-winding caliber L899.5, sorry, which is an ETA ABI.L91 base with a little anti-magnetic silicon hairspring featuring 72 hours power reserve. Available in Asia, the watch retails for uh, 25,100 Chinese New Chinese yen, which is equivalent to three thousand two hundred and fifty pound uh, euro. Sorry, so quite an expensive watch again. Three three thousand two hundred and fifty euros. Uh, what mm. what is this one? I oh, I like it. I like the look of that. I reckon it's cool. I like it as well. Yeah. Mm. I was just thinking the other day that I need a red theme to watch not that i would get this one but um, yeah. I, don't, I think there's not enough red pieces out there i think it's just a cool something cool to have in the collection eventually and this one with the fume it's not full-blown red in your face it's yeah. nicely done and it's a very you know it's subtle mm -hmm. it's sort of subtle anyway actually so yeah actually i, I ordered this particular watch because uh, uh for mm. chinese new year we have here the uh, the uh, reunion of the Chinese uh, Communist Party here in Germany, and I thought uh, that I'm going to wear that on that occasion. No, I'm, I'm just. Oh, yeah. No, no, so, um, <laughs> so, but, <laughs> but who the hell? Who the hell is riding flagship on that dial? I was going to say I, I don't yeah, mind the flagship. True. I hate the automatic. That's the only thing that I. <laughs> okay. Why do you have automatic written? I, I just that's my pet peeve when I see when I see automatic on a dial. It's really annoying. That's my only thing I don't like. But the flag I, I like flagship because it's a flagship. Come on. <laughs> I like also the the loom line on the uh, hands, the the hour and the minute, because because that's one of the things that I always. Uh, find uh, 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 like dress watches lacking at night if they don't have this shine is that you cannot tell the time in a dark room. Yeah. Yeah. I guess out. some of the cost is coming from the gold, right? That's that. I'm I'm, I'm imagining that's uh, probably yeah. fourteen the carat or, edition, right? carat or something. Yeah, gold is also very um, prosperous for the Chinese New Year and uh, in in Asia. Um, so the gold and red matches up excellently, you know, mm -hmm. it's a very thematic. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a tick from me. That's a cool piece. Yeah. Yeah. So sticking with the Chinese theme, we've got another one coming up. 
looks like red is the new color of the season now. Hamilton went to Ferrari, the Chinese New Year. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, staying with the Chinese theme and going back to the last show's calendar theme, I thought I'd bring this one to Mosebrow last year, using the lunar sun calendar with a retrograde display. This operates the motions of the sun and moon along with the Chinese zodiac. The slight downsize in the size of the display with tiny numerals as mentioned about the launching's lunar sun calendar depends on the moon and the sun. A month, for instance, is the time between two new moons with either 29 or 30 days. And for that reason, like Chinese New Year, it did not occur on the same day each year. This watch keeps track of everything. The emblemistic, um, embolismic month at the 12 o'clock, months on the left-hand side, and the days and moon phase on the right hand side. The Gregorian calendar uh, sits in a small aperture at six o'clock. And uh, um, due to the nature of the Chinese calendar, the disc at 12 o'clock for the year displays, display requires replacement every 12 years. So this uh, one here, just at the top. Oops. Or maybe it's smaller, but this display at the top you need to replace every 12 years, which there is convenient as that is the time Moses says the watch needs to be serviced every 12 years. Um, what's that aperture down the bottom under the seconds, Thomas? That's a date, that's the oh, okay. And what's so what's on the left? The left. What's on the left? The left uh, is the left We're looking... scale, the months on the left hand scale. Uh, oh, that's months, okay. okay. The day and moon phase on the right hand scale. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's yeah, the, so the moon phase on the right hand, okay. Yeah, yeah, months on the left, so, and then date at the bottom. But the numbers are really tiny, so it's really hard to read. The watch is powered by a caliber HMC. Uh, it's 40 mil, the watch, and it's powered by the HMC 210 in-house automatic, while the calendar is a module made by Argonaut, uh, who are now power owned by Moser. And it's 13 mil thick and made of 18 karat rose gold with a 30 meter water resistance. And the power reserve is three days and it's limited to 100 pieces costing seventy four thousand eight hundred dollars yeah amazing. i knew it was gonna sting i knew that was gonna sting. a lot of money yeah it's a nice looking piece though that's really nice i like it a lot yeah yeah it's cool. mm. yeah i really like it I don't like it. I don't like it. Seventy-five thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, totally get you. <laughs> but uh, solid gold Moser. I mean, that's 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 what, that's what you're playing. That's that's the that's the uh, the ballpark you're playing in, I guess. So, mm. Bill wants to see the back. Yes. Uh, I think that was the. Um, I think that was the Longine. I, I think. Yeah. So that's the back of this one, Bill. Ah, automatic I can off. So yeah, that was the Moser. Now I'm going to take us onto a quartz watch. I don't know whether they count. Um, but uh, I thought this was interesting for a moon phase. On a quartz, Thomas. Now Russ is uh, trolling me in private messages, which is even worse. So please, Russ, do it in in public. <laughs> so this Put him in the chat, Russ. Come on, man. Yeah. Chat. chat. Yeah. Let's see in the chat, Russ. This is the Citizen Sukiyomi. Uh, another watch introduced in 2023, uh, which is radio controlled with a moon phase movement. 
To celebrate the 30th anniversary of the first Citizen Radio Controlled Watch, they're debuting the uh, world's first fully analog moon phase function for light powered watches. The Tsukuyomi directly translates to reading the moon, and the watch features a new radio controlled Eco Drive caliber H874 movement that provides plus minus 15 seconds accuracy per month. Revolutionary proprietary super material and artfully crafted moon pan dials. Uh, based on a unique mathematical formula developed by system called Lunar Program, the watch calculates the phase of the moon each day from signals received from multi band radio transmitters. And the, the phase of the moon at six o'clock position is then automatically. Cheating, man. Uh, with the blue pan of the moon's surface on the dial, let's see if we can get a picture of that. Uh, with, yeah, blue pan of the moon's surface on the dial paired with a black outer ring, the day display at four o'clock position, the watch is sustainably powered by any light, including moonlight, using systems proprietary eco drive technology, so it never needs a battery. It retails for six thousand nine hundred ninety-nine pounds. It's four wow. and has a super titanium case and bracer and a hundred years water resistant as mentioned in the synchronized by the atomic clock with radio signals. It says on the citizen website that it's sold out. Also on the back of the case is a circular guide to various world time zones, which is used to set the moon phase, hemisphere and dates. Um, don't know whether they're fans of this one or whether you say it's cheating because it's quartz. I, I was a fan <laughs> until you said the price, to be honest. <laughs> the price, uh, I was just gonna say, oh, that's the perfect watch for somebody like uh, JQ who wants to set his uh, 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 moon phase without looking outside. So, have a watch that's <laughs> always set. And then I heard the price and I was like, oh, no, maybe not. So, <laughs> Actually, I'm using an app called uh, Moonface Pro, and uh, on the Patek Philippe uh, web page, for example, on the bottom, uh, you can see uh, Moonface informations and also Hodinkee uh, on the main page, uh, I think on, on the left corner, they also show the Moonface for Moonface okay. uh, owners. Uh, but um, uh, Hodinkee only shows how the moon looks like. Uh, they are not telling you how many days after full moon or new moon. Mm. Right. Yeah, I said it was cheap. I mean, for me, um, uh, and just for the guys in the chat, we were we were speaking a bit earlier before before we jumped on about moon phases, and um, Abdul and I were sort of talking about the, you know, like the romance of the moon phase, and for me, that comes around. I, I think about, you know, automatic dress watches or manual wind. Um, dress watches that have a moon phase. That's when I sort of think about what that what what would be the type of moon phase watch, if any, that I would buy. I mean, I don't think I would buy one, but to me, that's sort of what I sort of think about. A moon phase watch is a sort of a is a, is a really dress watch, and it and the romance comes from the fact that it's mechanical. It's a bit old school. Um, so when I sort of see a quartz moon phase, it just sort of defeats the. It, it just doesn't sit well conceptually for me if, if, if that makes sense you know like uh, just for me a quartz watch is just a watch you, you throw on and and it's a sort of a tool watch um putting a moon phase on just doesn't i don't know it messes with my head if, if that makes sense yeah yeah i don't know what, what you what you like with telling the time with one hand um but this might mess with your head this next one this is the uh <laughs> my 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 uh, lunoscope I really like this. Mm. Actually, I, I wanted to come back to, oh. to what JCB said, um, because I came across with one guy who could tell me why he needed a moon phase. And he yeah. was he was a hiker and uh, adventurer. And he said uh, then w uh, when, when he's doing hikes in, in the night, he would like to know if he can, can count on the moon, giving him giving him extra light when the skies are clear. Uh, so he 
he told me that that is uh, his usual usual useful application for it uh, but i agree with you on the on the romance and maybe tom can uh, pull up the the picture that i have in the background because i i must admit i'm old enough uh, to be able to tell you about the renaissance about the uh, the newborn of those moon faces um I started uh, selling watches uh, in 1985, if I remember correctly. That was uh, seven, eight years after the big quartz crisis. And uh, not many watch companies were doing well at that time. And the only moon phases back then that you could get were on Holy Trinity watches. So perpetual calendars from mm -hmm. AP, from uh, from Vacheron and uh, from Patek. Uh, so back then in 1985 a moon phase was an indicator for a super expensive mechanical mm. watch yeah uh, and uh, i've been talking about the iwc uh, da vinci uh, which was a kind of a price breaker um uh, that was the first moon phase watch even with a perpetual calendar that that was really affordable but then a couple of years later a chinese company made this type of watch uh, it was a cheap quartz shitter. Uh, we were selling it around 200 bucks and they were selling like crazy because all the, all the clients had that image that it is a nostalgic, super ex uh, uh, exclusive, super expensive complication in a watch. And those, we were selling those like crazy. You can't imagine how many of those watches we sold and uh, so that's even that's even worse cheating. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and uh, at the beginning they all had that big moon face, and that is why I hate those big moon faces in the Lange, in the Grand Lange big moon face. I can't uh, watch at it because it always associates me with those cheap quartz shitters from the nineteen eighties, and uh, okay. I, I simply can't tolerate that. Really interesting. Well, I'll get on with the cheap. Ashes. Okay, sorry for the tangent, but uh, <laughs> I'll get Good on with Good I'll get Tell us how you really feel, Jakey H. I'll, I'll carry on with this cheap, ashes, the big ass moon phase. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not familiar with Master Singer single hand watches, each line on the outer minute ring stands for exactly five minutes. The hand is therefore both a hour hand and a minute hand. For example, the time being displayed on the watch on the screen is 25 minutes past two. And uh, this lunar scope by Meister Singer is the first watch by the company with a moon phase model. The uh, dial is a midnight blue sunburst finish with the upper half featuring two pink cutout sections where the uh, orbit moon orbits around the Earth against the backdrop of a star studded night sky. And uh, there's a circular date window at 6 o'clock position, which is framed by a silver-plated bezel. As mentioned, the lunar scope is Master Singer's first watch to feature an astronomical complication, and the large moon face displays highlights an almost three-dimensional moon. And the moon face displays an exceptional, precise, and only needs a slight adjustment every 122 years, according to the brand. Uh, the watch has received an IF Design Award, a Red Dot Design Award, and the German Design Award for Outstanding Designs. So there you go, Jonathan. Big ass shit of moon watch. Yeah, I, I plead uh, the fifth here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the standard stainless steel case is uh, 41 millimeters in diameter and water resistant up to 50 meters with a dome sapphire crystal over the dial. And there's an exhibition case back. Um, oh, the look at that. That's Thomas cool. SW220, That's nice. which is specially formulated, modified for my singer's single hand watches, and the date can be conveniently set by a quick switch function of the rotor uh, and provides the watch with 38 hours of power reserve. And the hand indices and moon are loomed really, really nicely, as you can see in this picture. And the watch is priced at £4,190, which is pretty expensive. But that loom shot, 
That's expensive. Yeah. yeah, the loom on, on the moon is, is super nice. And I also like when they're putting extra effort to mimic uh, those shadows on, on the moon face, mm. uh, on the moon disk. So I'll yeah. I'll, I'll have to give it to them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah the, the, when, they, when they actually make the moon look like the moon, uh, it's really cool. I hope that yeah, Thomas I like is showing. Nature. I like having. I like seeing the the moon phase sort of larger on the dial because that's that's really like the complication, right? With most moon phases, unless it's a perpetual calendar or something, it's gonna it's gonna be a dress watch with the uh, with the moon phase. So why not um, give it a bit of dial, give it some real estate, you know? Hey, Shama. Shaman Asad, don't worry, you, you, you're here enjoying watch. Good so. to have you here. <laughs> Good to have you. You up in YouTube doing work for a mining machine and 10 minutes later you're here. What the heck, YouTube? Enjoy some good what? watch, and my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Long time. I saw this I'm one in, in reality. A friend of mine from, from the Netherlands has this one, and I saw it in a conference. Uh, it, it does look really nice on the wrist. Really, really nice, I have to say. I really like it. Yeah, but it's a big ass moon phase. I got another big ass moon phase for you coming up, Jonathan. So uh, <laughs> let's check that out. I don't know. I don't know what you think to the price of that one. Four thousand one hundred nine pounds. A bit steep. A bit steep yeah. for the Meister Singer, I think. Uh, that's that's a bit too much. Yeah, it's too much. Well, this this one also has a a nice glow in the dark moon phase. This is the fairer moon phase, and comes in three dial colors. Another watch release from twenty twenty three. As you may or may not know, the moon phase complication seems to go in and out of fashion, a bit like case sizes. But it's happily seeing a bit of a renaissance at the moment. British brand fairer are here offering their quirky multicolored take on the complication in a 38mm cushion-shaped case. The standout feature on the dial is the large moon, and each disc is hand-painted in Geneva. The standard colour comes on a salmon dial Eddington model, which is this one. Um, the name is after Sir Arthur Eddington, who is an English astronomer, physicist and mathematician. He is notable for being the first to correctly theorise that stars produce their energy through the fusion of hydrogen into helium. And he also had a lunar impact crater on the moon named after his, in his honour. So the watch's name is quite appropriate, really. Uh, the glossy midnight dial of the Halley model has a yellow moon, uh, which is this one, um, has a yellow moon that appears fresh looking against the space like blue void. The brightest pop comes from the Burbridge model, uh, bright blue sunburst, which features a huge baby pink colored moon. This one, uh, inspired by Native American, inspired by a Native American pink moon name, which was given to the April full moon. Uh, the different models use a mixture of Arabic and Roman numerals and Basson markers, which are all grade 11, grade 11 superluminova, along with a polished lance handset that is also loomed along with the moon. The second hand that pointed to, has the pointed A on the <laughs> tip, and there's a date at 6 o'clock. Inside is a hand round to to SW288-1. Elaborate grade movement with sharp details and blued screws, along with a bespoke fairer bridge, uh, which is in position coming in at £1,450. All three models oh. mixed up with a complication of 10 choices of fairer straps, including Italian leather and steel mesh. However, I'm sure that the strap options don't just uh, stop at the branded ones. So, this is more of your price point now. That, that, I was just gonna say that's really a uh, great price for the watch. I have to say, uh, hand wind movement, uh, vintage looking case, um, cool color combinations for everybody. I think Farad is one of these micro brands that are doing really well at the moment as well. Yeah, yeah, I like Farad designs generally as well across the board. I think they're pretty cool. 
they put a lot of effort into their designs i think um my only th i like the watch too my only thing is this one suffers from that um thing with the moon phase like right down near the near the pinion you can see it's uh, if they had just pushed that up a little bit the moon phase up towards the top of the the dial it would have balanced it a bit a bit better um that's my only gripe but otherwise yeah pretty cool yeah, I, I agree also with whole milk uh, sarah peneva is the best um, my favorite as well yeah got that one coming up yeah mm. Better, get, better skip through some of these because we've got quite a few to go through. Now, JCB, you're wearing a moon swatch, and uh, I thought it appropriate only to mention the uh, moon watch. So we've got a Speedmaster. Speedy moon phase, yeah. One of Omega's own most iconic timepieces is a Speedmaster. Which has been part of the lunar mission stays uh, missions stays with lunar theme and this moon phase version, which has a uh, two small set photorealistic moons on it. Now there's a lot to choose from as with, as with usual with Omega, tons of editions and uh, lots of moon phases. So I'll go. I'll just stick with this one, which is the. Uh, classic moon watch mm. and uh, you know what what i hate about omega is they remind me of these italian restaurants where they have 200 items on the menu <laughs> and you don't know what to choose and you just go to the guy and tell him like what's selling best what, what do you guys sell the most and he tells you ah, this one okay i'll take it <laughs> it just feels like yeah. this like ah any color you want yeah yeah so this is a 44.25 mil case, features a black sunbrushed dial with rhodium pledges hands and indices. At 6 o'clock, the moon phase indication features a metallic crystal disc microstructure to obtain a high resolution image of the moon. The stainless steel case has a black ceramic uh, bezel ring with liquid metal tachymeter scale. And the stainless steel brace has a fold over clasp. Omega's coaxial master chronometer 9904 meta certified self winding movement powers the watch with 60 hours of power reserve. It's 100 meters water resistant anti magnetic exhibition case back and is uh, 10,900 pounds. So I don't know what we're feeling. What? <laughs> Try and get. Just trying oh, to get. I'm trying to get a movement shot, but they don't have one. You think that's too much, JCB? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's come, that's that's pushing it, man. Yeah, that's that's a lot. It's too it's too much. Um, yeah, I don't look. Yeah, I don't. I, my dad's got a a, a moon a, a a moon watch, which is in the forty four point two five case, and. Um, it's it's just a little bit too big for me. I think it's that size case is probably going to be a bit big for most people. Um, so that's probably the, the 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 main issue with it. But just sort of I don't know. I, I I'm not sure if I like sports watches with a moon phase. To be honest, I feel like with this it, the the moon the moon watch is is a really a tool watch. It's a chronograph. It's you know that that's what it is and and this is going back to that thing i was talking about before and it could just be me that just my idea of moon phase it just sort of belongs more in the dress watch genre that's sort of where i feel it belongs i don't think it's a for me i don't i, don't, I wouldn't want to have a speedy with a moon phase um to be honest that's just my jam thomas yeah. you wanted a, a movement shot from this particular watch it's in the background <clears throat> all right so it has a column wheel and it's written above other mm. than that it's not really something no i'm losing sleep oh. nothing to write home <laughs> yeah okay we'll move on yeah. and uh back to moza uh, featured the Chinese 
uh, moon calendar. And uh, this is a beauty. In 2018, Mel's Brow on Endeavour Perpetual Moon Concept in Vanta Black. Uh, in 2019, they brow the same Endeavour Perpetual Moon Concept model with a gorgeous blue aventurine dial. The aventurine dial twinkles and the blue aventurine glass, also known as a goldstone, is sent to its silvery sparkle from cobalt or magnesium particles mixed in the molten glass. There's also a mineral known as a ventrine, which is a form of quartz with mica inclusions that also produces this uh, optical phenomenon of aventurescence. The dial of the watch in question, however, uses glass. The large aperture for the moon phase complication at 6 o'clock is suspended in the stellar scenery instructed only by Moses' classic leaf hands, along with a tiny day and night indicator on the central axis that rotates once every 24 hours, which I can't seem to find. Um, the right half of the dial from 12 to 6 o'clock corresponds to the AM, and the left from 7 to 8 o'clock corresponds to PM. So it says with this indicator, 24-hour indicator. Anyway... Moses' interpretation of a concept watch is a stripped off indices, logo, and any other markings to strip down to the bare necessity of to sell the time. Uh, this is in line with Moses' tongue in cheek attitude towards revered giants of the Swiss watch industry. It's also a clever marketing strategy to spot the distinctive look of less known Moses. Uh, the case is available in steel or 18 carat rose gold and is 42 in diameter and 13.1 thick. The short lugs allow the watch to sit comfortably on most wrists and uh, the only labelling is an M on the crown. Fitted with one of the most precise moon phase complications available with one day's deviation every 1,027 years. The phases can be adjusted to the minute with a push of a button on the side of the case. An average, on average, the moon's orbit period lasts 29.53059 days. To be more precise, 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and 2.9 seconds. The watch, in, the watch's intricate wheel train portrays this interval so precisely that the gap is a mere 0 0.23 seconds per day. That is to say, one day's deviation after 1,027.3 years. The moon is dis depicted with a silvery textured surface and is set against a blue background to adjust the moon. And there's a recessed push on the left case flank. The exhibition case back shows uh, Moses' in-house hand-wound caliber HMC 801, based on the perpetual calendar caliber, HMC 341, and has two barrels and delivers seven days of power reserve, and there's a power reserve indicator on the main bridge. Another unique feature is the interchangeable Moser scheme module that simplifies adjustments and servicing. Hacking seconds enable the precise testing, and there's a good view of Moser's strum and hair spring and the gold escape in wheel and pallet fork. It's a beautiful watch for the minimalists in, minimalistically inclined. And the price tag is, though, uh, 39,900 francs for the red gold model. And uh, it's a, yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous watch, I think. Just try and find some nicer pictures of it. Don't know what you think. Too expensive? Not nice? Too minimal? No, it's cool. Uh, the dial is cool, but I just don't like how they've done the moon phase part. Like, look at the... If you look at the blue disc, um, I'm assuming the blue disc moves around. It's yeah. just like, it looks like it looks like a piece of cardboard that they got out of a kindergarten <laughs> art class or something. Like, you've got this beautiful adventurine, and then look, look at that. Like it yeah. just doesn't that look, doesn't that look cheap? Like when against that crazy adventurine, then you've just got this weird flat blue 
um, disc there. That that's just really jarring to me. It just looks really odd. Um, like, why didn't they make that a Venturine as well? That's that would have been better. Mm, yeah. yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you're right. It would. I think uh, it's a hand painted yeah, right. uh, yeah. moon faced sub dial, right? Because it, it does look a little bit hand painted, right? It, it does look like. Uh... Yeah, I don't think that uh, this is uh, the the blue part is separate from the white part. I think they uh, they didn't add it on. Not sure how, how it works, but uh, to me, it also looks kind of painted. Mm. Um, but mm. I agree with you that it looks a little bit odd and. Uh, mm. A little bit off. Yeah. It's like everything about the watch is really nice. The case is amazing yeah, and the, the dial and the hand. Yeah. And then you the, the main I mean the, the feature part of the watch, the moon the moon phase aperture just looks really plain. Yeah. It's a little bit a little bit odd to be honest. But everything else just looks it's banging. It's a banging piece. But then you then that yeah, just uh, that's another one that's Confusing my brain a bit. <laughs> did I did I spoil it for you, Thomas? No, no, no. I'm just reading the comments. See if there's any highlights. Yeah. Exactly, but yeah. When you're bored in your in your lunch in your executive meeting uh, at the, in the boardroom, you can. Takes pretend to take some notes and color it in. Yeah, have a good time at the pub, Chris. Thanks for joining us, mate. Yeah, Chris, yeah, cheers, man. Have a, have a pint. And uh, Russell's saying, I'm sure someone will do it properly in adventuring. I doubt that somebody could. Yeah. Of course, there is another trolling. I know exactly what he means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you want, if thirty nine thousand Swiss francs is too much to pay, you could get a pretty much identical watch to that. Oh, Thomas, please skip that one because that's exactly <laughs> I, what what Russ was referring to. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will skip it. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> I, I saw that coming. <laughs> a fraction of the price. Of Can you believe the... Russ is having yeah. a, a splendid collection of Patek Philippe and Lange watches, and then he's buying this? I mean, I, I can't believe it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, Let's, let's, let's just roll with it. For a fraction of the price of Moses Endeavour Perpetual Moon Concept, you can pick up the budget version by Christopher Ward for £1,995. Now, I don't think that's too bad. The Christopher, the C1 Moon Phase also has a glass of entry and dial to resemble the sparkling night sky. And the Luminous 3D Moon is 25% bigger uh, than Christopher Ward's uh, 2015 C9 moon phase and 2019 C1 moon glow, and even more accurate in appearance. Powered by the caliber JJ04 automatic moon phase complication, it uses a Salita SW220 as a base, but the date wheel, along with its spring loading assembly, have been stripped out and replaced by four further wheels to drive the moon disc and two more for the setting mechanism. The result is a smooth perpetual action that sees the moon arc gracefully across the starfield night sky, and if kept wound, will follow the movements of the moon perpetually for 128 years. But it looks beautiful while doing so, I think. The moons have a ceramic superluminova mix on them, and they're in two constant rotation, and the case is 40.5 millimeters in stainless steel, and uh, 13.3 thick. It's got a 38-hour power reserve. Uh, I think that this looks quite good for the money, I think. For two grand, that's more like it. Yeah. Thomas, I, I only have Ooh. one comment. Can you pull up the image that is in the background, please? Mm, that's cool. I like it. It's got loom on it. It's, it's got... Mm. 
just using a Salita, so, but hey, for the money. And that's it when it's a full moon. So I'll just go, hold on, Jonathan. I'll just. Uh... Oh, you Chinese shit. Yeah, that's that. exactly why I don't like that, Christopher <laughs> Ward. Okay. Yeah. But for under two grand, I have to say they they did quite well compared to the other ones that we just talked about, especially the first one we discussed and, and especially the Moser. Um, I know the negative connotations to this uh, Raketa, or Paketa watch for you, Jonathan, might spoil this, but I, I tested out the Moon Glow, the one from 2019, and it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. I, I, I like the idea of having this glow. What I didn't like is that they have a see-through dial on top, so you could see the both moons at the same time. And with this one, you have the Aventurine, so you don't you get to see only the the, the moon face that you have on the twelve o'clock. Yeah, I mean, as I say, I like it. I think it's good for the money, good value for the money. It's certainly boosting the brand. They're managing to, you know, with a um we've got the name of the other one they did the chiming the bell watch. Canto. Bell bell canto, canto, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're bell canto they're doing the moon phase uh, they're branching they have this 12 uh, the yeah. 12 the integrated bracelet one is also quite nice for the money i think as they're much doing quite well as much as I love uh, hit, um, uh, mocking them, I must give them credit because they started as a maker of, of cheap generic watch cases. And just like you said, the Belcanto, the 12 and all that one are really home runs and they really yeah. up their games. Uh, I'm, uh, I hope that uh, Russ is not listening because I will never admit that in private. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, hats off. I thought they were going also the Bremont way, but they, they went the correct way, not the Bremont way. Yeah. Yeah. So I won by Parmigiani now. And uh, mm. we on our Christmas stream that we did, uh, we, the Curtis chose the Parmigiani on the 1950s, his dress watch of choice, and it was lovely. And in uh, 2017, Parmigiani introduced the black dial version of the Tonda 1950 with a moon phase indication. I've chosen to look at what I consider the more attractive blue dial version here. Uh, the first thing you notice about the moon phase is that it's different from others. It displays the moon as seen from two hemispheres with two windows and two different graduations. The south details the uh, 29.5 days of the lunar month, which is an approximation of the Greek word synodic month which refers to the average period of the moon's orbit with respect to the line joining the sun and the earth over the period of 29 days 12 hours 44 minutes and 2.9 seconds as previously mentioned most moon phase watches feature a wheel with 59 teeth which is 29.5 days times two which advance one tooth per day while the two moons appear one after the other in a window. And these moon phases usually require a correction of one day every three years. And there's a north section on this on this watch, this moon phase, which indicates new moon, first quarter, full moon, and last quarter. And the blue dial has a symmetrical layout with a well-portioned small seconds indication of six o'clock balancing out the moon phase. There's a large day aperture at 6 o'clock. Uh, the thin applied hour markers are paired with delta-shaped hands and luminescent material. The 39.1 millimeter and 9.6 thick. The steel case is very elegant with a thin, slightly sloped bezel. Uh, the watch is powered by a high-grade self-winding Parmesan caliber 708 based on the caliber PF702. And the movement is only four, four millimeters thick, thanks to its use of a lovely micro rotor, giving it a power reserve of eight hours, 48 hours. And there are two, 211 components in the watch, and the finishing looks beautiful with Geneva stripes on the bridges and a barley grain uh, pattern on the uh, micro rotor. Very sophisticated watch at 
uh, £14,000, which is, again, you might think is a bit too much. What is interesting about this watch is that this is how the moon disk actually works. So people think there is one moon on the disk. In fact, there are two, two moons on the disk, and usually you don't see the bottom part of it. So the bottom part of the moon face dial here uh, would be closed. So, but uh, you, can, you can see or you can get an idea how a moon face really works on, on basically most of the moon face watches. Yeah. So that that's one with two moons on the disc, which I really like. And uh, another one with two moons on the disc is uh, this one, which we have Swiss in the comments, by the way. Hi, Swiss. How are you doing? Hi, Swiss. Hi, Swiss. Yes, Swiss. Just highlight his comment. Hi, Perica. Good to see you, Swiss. Yeah, so this next one is another one with uh, two moons, but they stay static. And uh, it was GPHG nominated. No, it's the Hermes. Yeah, launched in uh, 2015. Yeah. This is on the watches. One of the watches has started to make moon phases more noticed over the past few years, I feel. Uh, it too displays the moon faces in northern and southern hemispheres. The dials can be made of meteorite or aventurine in 200 piece limited editions. And the mother of pearl moons stay static while the time is time and date dials uh, sweep around the dial in 59 days using the Hermes 1837 movement, which is self winding with 45 hours power reserve. Housed in a 43 millimeter white gold case with a which is a 13.27 millimeter thick, the uh, watch boasts 30 meter water resistance, which isn't much, but this isn't the kind of watch that looks like it was built to brave the seas. Um, it's lovely, I really like it. I really like that design. Don't know mm -hmm. what you think. Me too. Me too. Really cool. I liked it back then also when, when they won the GPHC. I didn't understand why they won it twice with the same watch. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like uh, uh, the watch as well. Yeah, it looks really nice, I think. Would you spend a lot of money on a Hermes, sir? Hermes, to see how much it was. 26,000 Swiss francs. Yeah, no. No, no, I wouldn't. It's got a meteorite dial or an aventurine dial. Uh, you can take a pick. Uh, the main problem with that watch is 43 millimeters and the top lug. <clears throat> mm. mm. yeah. But uh, Patel in the chat. How are you, buddy? Uh, Jakey H, can you pronounce the name of this uh, watch for, for us? Yes, no, no problem. Uh, so the the line is Arceau, and l'heure de la lune means the hour of the moon. Thank you. Hello, UK. Hello. They, they have is the another one with the, um... smaller, right? Say it again. Sorry, oh, the ladies' version. The ladies' version was smaller, right? The one that won also in the same year. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think if they they actually didn't say that that the other one was a ladies' version, I would tend more to go for the smaller size, especially with the slug construction. Yeah. Good CD. Hope you're doing well, my friend. So Can this you... one, the dial move around, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Patel Philip had, had to get this out of the system. So. <laughs> oh, leave it alone, Patel. Uh, it's a good watch, just Ben Anderson. I like it. Okay, on, on to on to um, Jonathan's field now, and uh, we'll cover the uh, Langers. 
Now, there's a lot to choose from here. A lot of different langers. The Langer Moon phase, which we saw is the beautiful 18 carat white gold black dial. But I really like these Grand Langers. I don't know what you see, Jonathan. Which have the moon phase. On the mm. main dial, I have the moon phase there. Uh, I have to say I like uh, J.K. Uh, Jonathan's uh, one more because somehow, uh, for me, the other one has like one third of the dial for each of the complications. And uh, this this seems like, yeah, just put the, 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 the moon phase inside just to have it. I hate that watch with a passion. <laughs> so you prefer like Jonathan's? Yes. Oh, yeah, I prefer so much better. Well. And um, I'm making here a big exception because, in my opinion, the the Lange one is a very simplistic and pure concept. And in theory, a moon phase would uh, would um, uh, would would uh, water this concept down. But the moon, moon phase is so nicely integrated, and that uh, a, a variable uh, date disc uh, or moon disc or sky disc uh, is just the icing on the cake. So, so I'm tolerating the breach of the pureness of the concept here. So, yeah. Mohammed! Hey! hey Pepsi you? owner! Congrats uh, on Pepsi your watch. Owner. Congratulations on your Pepsi, my friend. Oh, great to yeah. see you, Char. Yeah, congrats, mate. Yeah, congratulations, mate. Thomas, pull the um, pull pull the 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 Langer one that I've that I've got up when you when you got a minute. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one I would go for, JQH, Ooh. the, uh, the oh. Lumen Beautiful. Moon Phase. This one's not, pretty cool. I will not bid against you on that. I'm I'm still hoping that they're making, you know, this year is the thirtieth year of the the first Lange collection, and uh, I'm pretty sure they will shell out uh, some uh, some anniversary models, and I'm hoping for a simple Lange one lumen, that would be fantastic. Yeah, they're really they're really sought after, like really and really expensive on the secondary, aren't they? Yeah, they're like. Lumens are crazy. Yeah. Yes. And to, be honest, to be honest, a uh, hundred thousand dollar more just for the luminous uh, highlights and for the semi-transparent uh, dial. I understand that those are rare and those are hyped, uh, but it's the same. Just like I say for uh, about a Nautilus. Nautilus is not an eighty thousand dollar watch, and this is not a two hundred thousand dollar watch or mm. whatever it goes. So yeah. basically, you have a normal. Lange, uh, a Grand Lange moon face um, with a fancy dial, and you're paying yeah. massive money uh, yeah. as a premium. Yeah. What do you think to build trolling comment? Um, everything is off center. They must have had crooked eyes when they made these watches, Jonathan. Well, the, the concept of the Lange one is uh, based on the uh, golden ratio, and if you see, it's not really off center. There is a, uh, there is a, a, um, a third. So, so it is a separation by mm -hmm. third. So you can see the center of, of the, the, the time display uh, is in one third and the center of the, the power reserve is in another third. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is very precisely um, yeah. uh, um, uh, separated into three sectors. So that is the, the design concept. This is not just uh, using a, a pump gun and shooting on a target. Uh, this is well thought. There's lots of there's actually lots of symmetry going on, as JQH said. Like these these this lines this is, up here. Yeah, this, this line is 50-50. So so yeah, the, the center line cool. is is fifty fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Rancher. <laughs> <laughs> Rancher says it's based on the golden shower ratio. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Rancher, <good to> <laughs> 
Uh, the Watch Apprentice. Um, if someone else can pull that up, I've got a ton of watches to go through still. Yeah, um, no um, It's a 384.026. Um, i got a ton of watches to go Let through. Let me pull it You don't want to lose your tabs again, Thomas, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I have it here. So we're talking about the Saxonia uh, with the uh, with the big date and the moon phase below. Um, the only flaw with this particular watch, in my opinion, is it's forty millimeters. It's a little bit on the on the bigger side. Mm. So yes. Uh, movement side and that's the front and i think they are also making it with a black doll let me check um, is this the watch talk with the punters yeah i'm carrying on the legacy of uh blue shirt um rancho been doing it for a year um it's what we do yeah we're carrying on blue shirt's legacy bless him um and we we're just talking watches and uh it's this is the time so it's a bit early for you in america uh but we got to synchronize with jcb in australia and uh it's uh it's a uh, good time so uh yeah hope you enjoy the stream my friend so in my opinion both uh, both variants with the black doll are better than the one with the silverish doll mm -hmm. yeah Okay. Right, so I'll move on to my favorite brand. But not really my okay. favorite watch from them. Yeah, not really my favorite watch from them. And uh Breguet Classic. Now this is launched in 2019. The Breguet Classic is the best definition of the word for this watch. Inspired by the antique Breguet number no. five pocket watch. Which is absolutely phenomenal. This, um, the this pocket watch from 1793 to 1794, which is one of Breguet's finest examples of work. An automatic quarter repeater, which had a 60-hour power reserve, Breguet actually faithfully recreated the number five pocket watch, starting in 2040. In small series to be sold at a price of one million eight hundred thousand US dollars, and uh, obviously getting within reach of something like this is now an impossible because of availability and price. So enter the uh, seven seven eight seven wristwatch, and uh, here we go. So. Uh, the position of the complications isn't exactly the same as on the number five pocket watch, but definitely inspired by it. Looking at it, it just shouts Breguet. The 39 millimeter weight in carat wild gold case has a lovely pillared coin deck and uh, is uh, 10.2 thick. Um, the case is also available in rose gold. The grand four enamel white dial has the moon phase at. 12 o'clock, the power reserve in the lower right-hand quarter of the dial has a long baston hand and arch track. Uh, the blue Breguet hands point to the classic Breguet numerals and there's a Breguet signature at 9 o'clock. Inside is a calibre 591 DRL, which has a gold centrally oscillating weight with a gear-shaped hand, which is visible through the exhibition case back and uh, provides 38 hours of power reserve. Due to now being a swatch group brand, Breguet have broken the tradition and are using a silicon escapement and hairspring which have anti-magnetic properties. So Bill Sanders, unfortunately, wouldn't like that one. Uh, it's currently retailing for £29,100. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, guys? Any uh, I, I like Breguet, but... Mm, mm. Not that much. A not that much yeah it just doesn't translate from the pocket watch well into the watch i think they're just 
Yeah. But maybe it's the num like the numerals. The pocket watch doesn't have the Breguet numerals. It's just got the the it's got Romans, and that just looks much better here the with these numerals. Watch, the pocket watch huh? is a mind blow. The pocket watch is amazing. Yeah, yeah look look how nicely that like it's just it's spaced nicely and it's it just looked like the it's just designed. Yeah, you know, it's just designed really nicely. But on the on the wristwatch. It's just a jumble. It's just it's it's a it's a fucking steaming mess, if you ask me. Yes, I agree with you. It's a, it's a bloody mess. Uh, mm. Tom should have pulled up the thirty one thirty, which is the the exact replica of of this particular pocket watch, which, by the way, is uh, in okay. the Rolex collection. Mm. I appreciate the the enamel dial and everything, but other than that, in my opinion, the the numerals look cheap, and the layout mm. is a is a mess. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's not the same, is it? It's it is a bit of a mess, but I still love you, Brega. But <laughs> <laughs> one se one second, I will pull up a a, a nice picture of the three one thirty. Is this in two, it's in thirds too? It looks like it's in thirds. Yes, yeah, sort Maybe of in thirds. Watch. Sort of broken up in thirds. And we've got a little fact here from Walt Prentice. Winston Churchill had a Breguet 765 pocket watch all his life. A still going house in the Imperial War Museum. Oh, right, so. can't deny Brega uh, yep. out there, you know. Got some brilliant stuff. Here, that is the yeah. the wristwatch that is based on this particular pocket watch. And in That's my opinion, that That's comes better. very yeah. close to uh, to perfection. Yeah. yeah. That's much better. Hmm. And by the way, that, that is uh, the creation of Daniel Roth. So uh, uh yeah daniel roth was in charge for uh for recreating the breguet collection when uh, breguet was owned by chomet and chomet was broke and breguet was broke and they hired uh, hired then uh, daniel roth uh, to create uh, a collection and what he did is he was just looking into into the famous uh, book uh, the art of breguet who is the author? Who is the author? I don't. I don't remember who's the author. But he just took uh, vintage uh, pocket watches from Breguet and made wristwatches out of that. Beautiful. Yeah. So I've seen that uh, most moon phases are <clears throat> watches, and uh, well. We've seen that they're not with watches like the Speedmaster, and it's a slightly higher end sports watch loved by many, being the Patek Nautilus, which features a moon fade. Uh, with the rounded octagonal shape of the bezel and the porthole inspired construction of its case, the horizontally embossed style with the uh, 5712-1A features a running seconds at 4 o'clock next to a date wheel at the uh, 7 o'clock where inside features a small moon phase complication. At 10.30 there is also a power reserve indicator. The self-winding caliber uh, 240 PS 1 RM CLU powers the watch with a 48 hours of power reserve as indicated on the dial. And the stainless steel case has a screw down crown giving it 60 meters of water resistance. And there's an exhibition case back to show off the movement. And the micro rotor uh, also, um, it also has a well recognized steel bracelet, but the watch is also available in full rose gold and white gold. And was available with rose gold on leather, white gold or rose gold on leather straps. To lose discontinued recently, a couple of days ago, by Patrick Philippe. 
And the UK retail price for this in steel version is uh, £14,950. And uh, you can see here. I don't know what you think of the notes of the sky. Do you fans? For 40k, if you could buy this watch, yeah. But if you want to get like a complication pathic that in, I, I think the only affordable one right now is the Neptune because of the the weird integrated bracelet style that they have. Um, I, to be honest, I'm it's it's for me a, a watch that yeah doesn't doesn't evoke any emotions. This one. Yeah, same with me. I'm not really a fan of it. Not so this, to be honest. With you. Really. I'm, I'm a super I'm, fan of this. I totally I, love it. I prefer the Aquanauts with the Nautilus. I do. Mm. Th this one has the beautiful 240 base movement with the micro rotor. Yeah. Um, it also has the power reserve where the Brigade that we just showed has. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I really like that watch. If I could get it at retail, I would buy it. Actually, uh, I was uh, I was very close in buying it. Uh, and then I stupidly moved uh, moved over to AP and bought that carbon uh, Royal Oak offshore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a classical watch, isn't it? I mean, all the high watch fanboys love love a good nautilus don't they but um... yeah, it's not it's not a one hundred thousand dollar watch no no doubt about that yeah yeah <clears throat> meister yeah. good morning good to see you no, I, just don't, I don't like this watch at all like i don't know the like but just look at the dial how like every there's all of the all of these little sub dials just chucked together i feel like there's no like they haven't I'm sure, I'm sure they've given some design, some thought to the design, but when you look at it, it doesn't seem that way. It just seems like they've shoved in some complications randomly. And I don't know, I just look at it and I just feel like it's just not a very well designed piece to me. So I just, I don't feel, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the hype. I know everyone loves this watch, the 5712, blah, blah, blah. But to me, it doesn't, it does absolutely nothing. And I tried on the rose gold one and it was like, it felt nice on the wrist and all, but just looking at this, I just, uh, I, I don't get it, to be honest. I don't get the hype. I don't get why people like it other than people probably think that they need to like it really. And that's just what I think. That's how Philippe says, uh, Jake Hirsch is a huge fan of Nautilus. He said not to buy grand complications and aspire to 5711A. <laughs> um, I don't mind. I think it's a 5980. I think that's the that's the one with the, the flyback um, function. I don't, I don't mind that one. But Nautilus generally doesn't really do anything for me. I don't know about you guys. Just generally... A collection Nautilus doesn't. I'm just like not feeling it. Hi, Rodney. Like he, he says it's too busy and uh, less is more. Sorry, Abdul. Mm. What are you saying? No, I was just saying I'm, I'm like you, Tom. I like the Aqua not more uh, uh, for somehow more than the Nautilus line. Yeah. Well, we'll stick with Patek. We'll get off the Aqua no, but we'll stick with Patek. And uh, got to one of their other moon phase watches, which is the Celestial. Uh, highlighting Patek Philippe's great tradition of astronomical watches, the Celestial devotes its dial to a rotating chart of the heavenly bodies. At any time its owner may admire the exact configuration of the nocturnal sky in the northern hemisphere. With the apparent movement of the stars and the phases and the orbit of the moon. Two skeletonized hands point to the hours and minutes of the mean solar time, an ellipse deposited on the underside of the sapphire glass frames a portion of the sky visible from Geneva and all other cities located in the same latitude. The self winding mechanical uh, movement is Patek Caliber. 240 LUCLC, which is a point to date, hours and minutes of mean solar time, a sky chart phases and moon of the orbit, and uh, time of meridian passage of Sirius and the moon. 
And uh, the dial has three metallized sapphire crystal discs, as well as an ellipse framing the portion of the visible visible f from Geneva, the hours visible from Geneva, um, or the moon visible from Geneva, sorry. It's got a platinum case, exhibition case back, 44 mil this one, so that's a big one. 10.58 mil thick, 30 meters war resistant, 48, 45 hours power reserve with the 22 carat gold micro rotor. But it's uh, went 285,700 pounds. So if you like this one, you're going to cough up a lot of money. <sighs> I think it even costs more than the secondary market, right? Yeah, it will do. Yeah. Nice micro rotor. Rotating dial. Um... So what's this? The spy over Geneva, did you say? Is that what it is, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that latitude, yeah. Right, okay. Hmm. It's, it's a nice a little flex bit like watch. Spilled milk. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't see myself. Yeah. Even if I had the money to buy it, I don't see myself wearing it. To be honest, me, yeah, no way. There's a million other watches I'd buy instead of this. Absolutely, yeah. me neither. I'm not uh, that into astronomical watches to want to spend a quarter of a million on it. No, <laughs> no way. And if you're in Geneva, wouldn't you just look up at the sky anyway? <laughs> like. What if it's a cloudy day? That's ridiculous. Can you can you see the hands? Uh, those uh, those took in, uh, inspiration from my uh, from my celestial voyager, uh, world timer. Exactly the same hands. No, it's probably the the other way around. Rob D. Lifestyle. Yeah, that's. Nice, but um, not for a quarter million quid. What What does yeah. he mean with compressor crowns? Are those screw down crowns or? Uh, well, the top one alters the time. The bottom one uh, rotates the inner. Yeah, I know that, but uh, but he he's describing them as compressor crowns. Uh, so I, I think, think the style. The style. Oh, like yeah, oh okay, okay. Yeah, just having a few. Like a so dive watch. Yeah. Compressor yeah, dive I agree. This is an elegant watch. So. so I'll move on from style of moon phase to one that uh, Abdul um, might know a bit more about, living in Germany. I think he's met Philip Pikulik. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful one. This is a GPXG nominated one. Released in 2023, nominated for GPHC last year in the calendar and astronomy category. This was a Philip Piccolick third watch, I believe, called the Moon F Month Phase One. Moon Phase One. Uh, the stainless steel case is 41 mil with a 10.5 thickness. It's a fully polished and sapphire crystal to cover both the dial and the exhibition case back. The workings and dial steal the show here. And uh, the dial is brass base, which has been frosted with rhodium plated and rhodium plated, then surrounded by a black polished chapter ring. The handmade hands have a polished and frosted side to them. The open section of the dial reveals part of the running gear at uh, 8 o'clock, but the real talking point is the 3D spherical moon phase at 10.30, which has a frosted finishing with a dark and light side, along with some added dimples to create a bit more light. Finishing touches on the dial are the hand engraved inscriptions of the maker's name, Philip Glick, as well as the words, you're going to have to help me here, Jonathan, Ger Gefertig in Berlin, which translates as crafted in Berlin. I don't know how to pronounce that right. Bill is asking about the price. I'll tell him. Uh, the movement is a highly reworked ETA Unitas 6498 ETA or Unitas 6497. Philippe has taken the uh, taken away the uh, small seconds indicator and movement and has integrated an in-house development and made the 3D spherical moon phase display instead. 
Attention to detail on the front continues around the back with plenty of traditional finishing techniques on display. A rhodium plated main plate holds down the skeletonized bridges. Gold plated gears and a gold plated and hand engraved balance cock. And the screws of the black polished and the crown and barrel wheels have a sunburst brushing. All edges have been beveled and uh, polished by hand as well. When fully wound, this watch has a power of over 50 hours and the watch is limited to 20 pieces and has a price tag of 24,000 euros, Bill. So, uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about this, Abdul? Yeah, uh, Felipe is, uh, in my opinion, one of the rising stars in, in, in German watchmaking. Um, I bought his first watch back in the day when he was alone making everything by hand. Uh, I think when I went to his uh, workshop in Berlin, he told me my watch was his third watch to ever make. Um, so it was really uh, nice to see him in flash with my watch and, and see everybody in the workshop. And as you can see, he has Eastern Arabic on this uh, 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 track uh, around the dial. So you get also, uh, and the movement is beautiful. I have to say everything there were really nice guys there. The, he's training also several watchmakers. So he has uh, uh, new watchmakers uh, because he was working alone uh, before. And uh, yeah, really, really nice guy. Um, definitely support him. Um, and this one is so beautiful in flesh. I was there in the workshop when he was sending the watch to the GPHG. Um, I couldn't post the pictures because uh, he said, okay, don't post the pictures now because I will send it now to the GPHG. Um, such a nice watch. And, and Thomas, he showed me yeah. how he was polishing uh, the moon Can and everything. Can you stop that that image because th that is that is really amazing. Uh, you see that three dimensional moon uh, that he exactly. integrated into an existing movement. I mean yeah. that that is really that is really uh, putting some some extra effort. Um, I'm not talking. I'm not even talking about those in inward angles uh, that he put on the beautiful anglage. So that is that is really fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really is. See the spherical moon there. But it's, yeah, I think it's gorgeous. This watch, really mm -hmm. amazing. Love it. Just that's a killer piece. But what is also nice when you see it from the front, you 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 think ah. Oh. It's uh, it's one of those uh, very minimalistic German watches, and then you turn it around, and boom! Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the attention to detail is is incredible. Like when I went there and he showed me everything and he explained, I didn't even notice this Eastern Arabic uh, numerals on the uh, on the sector uh, 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 around the dial. And then he, when he showed me, I was like, wow, that's a very nice touch. That he, you have to look really track. close. Yeah, if you look yeah. closely at the 12, there is the Eastern Arabic 12. And then if you go back, the 11 is there, the 2 is there, the 4 is there, yeah. the 6, and so on. Yeah, and the beautiful. polishing of the hands are amazing. Really, really, really nice watch, I have to say. Beautiful, Abdul. Amazing that you got to visit his workshop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of this one. Big, oh. big fan. I don't know what the uh yeah wow that back exactly rob d <clears throat> amazing bill says he thinks i've included the lunar lander on the moon <laughs> 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 <clears throat> uh and the backside <laughs> yeah gorgeous watch that one so a similar one with the spherical moon um was one that i put on the thumbnail Don't know what uh, is this the other one? yeah you'll probably prefer the uh philip piclic to this one but this is the uh arnold and son lunar magna red gold meteorite oh. uh, no, i like this one Another watch with a 3D spherical moon phase that was launched in 2023 was the Lunar Magna by Arnold and Son. A beautiful blue meteorite dial with its 12 millimeter revolving sphere. Uh, the most common class of 
uh, iron meteorites called octahedrites, uh, renowned for Wid Widman's Staten, the Widman Staten pattern that is uh, revealed when a cotton polished surface of meteorite is etched with diuretic acid. Classic metal crisscrossing patterns of the meteorite are then treated with a matte blue shade of PVD to suggest the look of the cosmos. Uh, the small dial at noon, which displays the hours and minutes, is crafted from a piece of milky white opal, which has classical black Roman numerals and blue tans, and the open arrow shaped tips on it. Half of the sphere representing the moon is made from Cacholong opal, which the other half is blue PVD meteorite, and the opal's natural Iridescence plays to the ambient light really well in low light conditions, and the dial in the opal half of the moon emit a blue green glow thanks to the superluminal coating. Astronomical accuracy is guaranteed by the precision of the caliber A and S 1021 hand wound moon phase complication, which, if kept wound, would require an adjustment of only one day every 122 years. However, there's a practical way to correct the moon phase directly at the crown. Uh, there's a healthy power reserve of 90 hours in the movement, which is finished with Geneva stripes radiating from the center in the perlage. And the polished red gold case is uh, 44 millimeters and 15.9 uh, mil thick. And the watch is limited to 38 pieces and retails for 59,000, which is Ooh. almost quite Twice the price of the uh, Philip Piccolic. But uh, you do get this nice looking. You can see the striations on there on the dial. Mm. On the, the meteorite dial. I don't know whether on the meteorite on the uh, spherical moon phase. But I'd go for the Philip Piccolic, I think. Me too. This one's a bit big too. What did you say? 44 yeah. and nearly 16 thick. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit on the large side. Uh, but I'll just show you. I'll, I'll bring this one up. Yeah, 44 and 15 thick. So it's a chunky monkey. But yeah, it, it, it looks nice in the in the night. It looks nice. Oh, with that's the, nice. Uh, that's nice. With mm. the uh, loom on it. Can you pull up a uh, whole milk's comment? Uh, it's a grand citizen, which, <laughs> which is really funny. <laughs> because Arnold and Son belongs to a citizen. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice touch yeah, of the so face on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Pull up the um I, I like the original one, uh, which came out a few years ago. I'm gonna say uh, maybe three or four years ago. So it, it, first, it came. This was the one here, that Aventurine dial. Aventurine, the, yeah. um, I look at that because it actually looks like the the sky. It looks stunning. I remember when this came out, and um, I was just thinking, "Wow, what a cool piece!" But this must um, be really thick because that three dimen di uh, dimensional yep. moon ball. Yeah, uh, you must, yeah, you yeah. must put that somewhere. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Pop, so that's why it's 15, uh, 15 millimeters. That's why it's, we'll call, call it 16, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, it, uh, yeah. Bill says, beautiful watch, shit, 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 crown. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't look too bad on that one. It might have been the angle on the, on the, on the first one that you saw there. Anyway. And uh, but also, <laughs> I'm having a knock at you, uh, Jonathan. Yeah. You now know, now I'm having two trolls here in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a watch made in Japan, Bill? I don't think so. No, 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 no. no. no it'd be yeah, Swiss made. Uh, Swiss made, just Japan owned. But they're not independent anymore. That is, uh, that is yeah. a little bit my beef. Yeah. They're an English brand, but they're made in Switzerland, right? 
Yeah, English okay. originally, originally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, owned by a Japanese brand, so <laughs> a lot of <laughs> English owned by a Japanese, made in Switzerland. Made in Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people call me the globalist here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. ah. Anyway, move on to another brand, Debitoon. Don't know what we oh. think of this. Uh, the DB25 Moon Phase. Um, this one's a lot of money. Um, 73,450 euros. Uh, I think this wow. came out, I think it came out in 2010. This is another watch with a spherical moon phase at 12 o'clock, which is half palladium and half five lid steel. So in a blue titanium subdial inlaid with yellow gold stars, the matte silver plated uh, dial is decorated in the center with a lotus flower gear shame motif. There's a raised chapter ring with either black or very dark blue. I can't quite make the out Roman numerals. And the Pomme de Breguet steel blue hands, they call them. Um, the 44 mil, again big, and the 12.8 thick red gold case, inspired by a drum, doesn't have Debethune's famous articulated lugs, but fixed lugs, and houses a manually wound DB210-5S calibre with a six-day power reserve on the back. And as I say, Watchbox is selling this for uh, 73,450 used. So uh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. That moon phase is gorgeous. You, you like this one, Jonathan? Yes. yes. Can we see the movement? Is that also the that Star Trek thing? Or yeah. Can you use... Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. Now I'm turned off. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's got a power oh. reserve on the back. It's, it's got this it's... Uh, six day power reserve on the back there. Yeah, it's nice, but I like I don't like that star Star War, uh, Star Trek logo. I'm never a fan of the Star oh. Trek dials mm. that they do. I, I love the DB twenty eight digital that they do. Yeah, but I'm yeah. generally not a fan of uh, Debatoon. Um, no. So just they have off. a they have a simple three hander also. I think it's DB twenty one without the moon face. Visually, I, I like that also, but uh, it has the same problem with it, with uh, with the movement. So here's one for JCB. More of a chronograph than a moon phase. This one, um, but I just thought I'd pick it up because. I was, it's Caribou Lane and I love him. So, uh, yeah. A Caribou Lane and Masterpiece Chronograph 2 in Platinum. Now, this is a very special Rootsalane and watch. Uh, there's a piece unique in dial color and case material. Caribou Lane and only made 10 of these Masterpiece Chronograph 2s in 2013. And six of them were customized for a watch group of friends that the author who wrote this Cullen Pad article is in. Um, this black dial platinum case version is owned by a member of the group that lives in London. Other members of the group got white gold ones with two toned gray dials, uh, pink gold ones, a stainless steel one, and platinum one with a dark blue dial. And this one in black with the printed, with the uh, printed rather than applied roll, our numerals, and then with these all in white with bright silver coloured hands, without the blue rings in the central disc characteristic of Rutilene and watches. Uh, this piece even emits the traditional handmade notation from the bottom section of the dial at the buyer's request. And the only bit of colour on this watch is a splash of blue little splash of blue on the moon phase apart from the tiny moon phase this watch is about uh is a 30 minute chronograph using a manually round caliber 25q with gold or rhodium plating and it has a 55 hour power reserve 
of the 10 edition cases were available in pink gold white gold steel or on or platinum, on platinum or platinum all 44 millimeters and one had an officer's case back engraved by eddie jacquet um dials were available in a variety of color schemes such as black anthracite silver and blue with applied or printed indices and markings and the price wasn't disclosed in this article but i imagine this was in the 200 thousands um but it's just that's the moon phase there that's it tiny blue dot but i just thought you might like this things you're a chronograph from jcb uh yeah yeah i don't look it's it's kind of cool because i don't know i feel like i need to like it because it's a boot of line <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah you know what i mean yeah, I was um, I was about to ask what what if uh, there there would be uh, there wouldn't be the booty line and logo on it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, from, <laughs> yeah. From the thing, it's, I feel like this one's a little bit of a jumble as well. There's there's a lot going on, like compared to say the Langer that we looked at before, right? Mm -hmm. Where you could sort of your eye could tell where the symmetry was. Here, there is some symmetry, but I feel like with the small seconds that over over at the top on the left there that's not quite mm. it's just sort of sitting out of place with the other elements of the dial i don't know it's just a bit of a jumble this one a little bit and the lugs as well i'm not I'm a huge fan of these lugs to be honest so yeah it's a bit i sort of feel like i yeah yeah jokey h if it wasn't a vuta line and i'd probably just be like yeah it's okay you know yeah, I, I don't love it i don't hate it it's just sort of in between for me. I, I feel like uh, maybe thanks, the, thanks for joining us. Take, uh, care. take care, buddy. So, uh, no worries. I, I feel like uh, maybe Votolino was giving props to some of his favorite watches by making this watch because it, it feels like you get uh, a little bit from Lange One with the big date, you get a little bit uh, uh, from uh, Breguet's small uh, dial, you get a little bit from the moon phase from, uh, it just feels like he liked a couple of stuff from a couple of watches he liked and, and he put together. Um, mm. or at least that's my uh, uh, feeling when I see this watch. And like you said, if it didn't have the Vitaline name, I wouldn't have liked it to be honest as well. I just, to, me, uh, to me, it looks yeah. more he, <clears throat> he, he laid out the movement and the layout, the, uh, the construction of the movement dominates the, the placement on the dial. Um, that is how oh. I see it. Yeah. And it's weird because you've got the only... The only two touching subdials are the the time and the chronograph that they're, they're touching, you know, the 30 minute chrono, whereas the other pieces are not touching. They're sort of, they're sitting on their own. So it's like, why are those two pieces touching each other and the other ones aren't? It just sort of, it's a little bit visually incoherent. I think this, the design of the, the layout of the, the dial, uh, it's just sort of, yeah, it's just not work. It's just not gelling for me. This one. Yeah, we'll move on then. But thanks got... for thinking, of Thomas. Appreciate it. <laughs> got another very quirky one here. Uh, Vini Halter. Um... I was going to say before Abdul, when you were saying he was picking things out, I was going to mention Vianney Halter as well. There as well, I sort of was getting a little bit of those vibes in that in that Vuitton line, and to be honest. Yeah, this is a really quirky one. I'll just have to zoom in on the first one here. Yeah, well, that's you cool. really have to watch for gold feel. Um, I'm, sh I'm not sure when this one was made, but this Fratello article is from 2011. And that gives you some idea. And the watch is known as the VH GPF. Uh, it's pretty unique and not particularly complicated. You'd be forgiven for thinking that uh, the big number in it, in its own box is the date, and the uh, two hands on the uh, dial are minutes and hours. And perhaps that strange little stubby hand in its own round window is to, to top off with maybe a power reserve 
or continuous seconds. In fact, you'd be wrong. Uh, the watch is actually a jump hour with a big number being the hour. Minutes and seconds on the large dial and the little stubby hand is in fact a moon phase display. Oh. And uh, so that little round there is the moon phase display. Um, um, yeah. So not having a babe function, you cannot set this completely accurately. Winding the crown forwards the same position advances the time and winding it backwards uh, just the uh, moon face hand. If you miss the time you're aiming for, though, you have no choice but to go around to the 12 hours and try again. It's effectively high geared quick set. This Rene Halter VH DPF predates the more commonly known Antica and classic pieces. It's a rarely seen model and has some unique touches, nice finishes, and some surprising crudeness. It was something created in the process of an artist finding his identity. The case is finished exquisitely, and apparently the dots on the front surface were hammered by hand by Vinial to himself for these dots here. Um... Yeah, I remember uh, when uh, when Gold Gold Five uh, were were uh, doing. There, there are four different finishes on the case, uh, which are polished, satin, brushed, and hammered, and the dials and hands look a bit crudely done. Uh, the dial printing is not as dense as one would like, and the edges are a little fuzzy under magnification. Uh, the movement is a heavily modified ebosh, if not of no particular note. I'm not, I'm not sure of the exact caliber. It has Viennese complication plate integrated, uh, carrying the jump power, moon phase, and decentered, decentered minutes and seconds, and movement finishing. However, it's very workmanlike. And the article says that Nomos movements look like look head and shoulders better. In general, it's quite a unique and whimsical watch. It doesn't mention a price. Uh, so, sorry, Jonathan. No problem. I remember, I think in the 1990s that was. So Goldfile is a German uh, company, and they <clears throat> they did handbags and and fashion. And uh, in in the late 1990s, um, this company has moved to Hong Kong, as far as I know, and they try to be super luxury, ultra luxury, above Louis Vuitton, and and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And uh, I think that there was one freak, one watch lover, who was in charge with the with with those watch projects, and he knew all the the independents, just like Max Busser did uh, at the beginning with Harry, Harry Winston, and they mm. made some some crazy independent watches, uh, all with uh, in-house movements and uh, unsellable designs, but totally crazy. Uh, approach and they had a lot of money to spend apparently and they made those watches and and i really uh was fascinated by the the ugliness of the design but the boldness of the approach uh so uh predictably that all failed um i think that uh, the company is now bankrupt uh, but i found it bold that that a conglomerate located in hong kong was taking up on the French uh, to do super luxury, ultra luxury, uh, particularly on wa on watches. I thought that that was a very interesting project, but it totally flopped. Oh, so to you go. Russ, have a good day, mate. Have a good day, one. All right, yeah, uh, they're a German company, are they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Goldfall means golden arrow, and and that was their logo. Right. Oh, well, Apes likes it. Nice Feeney Halter. I mean, yeah. you know, oh, Feeney yeah. Halter makes some great watches. I mean, it's really quirky designs. Mm -hmm. His Deep Space Nine Torbjorn is something yeah. else. It's amazing. But some of his other watches look very quirky. Yeah, uh, very, very quirky. I'll pretty much take any watch that he makes, to be honest. They're all, they're all dope, I reckon. Yeah, they are nice. They are nice. He's a, he's a lovely bloke as well. Lovely bloke. Mm -hmm. Chatsu. 
So I, I just pulled uh, pulled up the Wikipedia article. So they made they made a series of uh, the Seven Masters. It was called, and um, the Seven Masters were uh, uh, Antoine Prezioso, I think Italian, Bernhard mm -hmm. Lederer, whom we all know, oh, Felix he's... Baumgartner, now Urwerk, uh, Frank Jutzi, um, I've never heard that name, Sven Andersen, Vianney Halter, and Vincent Calabrese. So all uh, members of uh, the AHCI, yeah. and they made a small series uh, for for this luxury approach in two thousand and one. So I'll just move on to one that Apple really likes and uh, was mentioned earlier on. By uh, we'll see, Sapaneva. Now, in the mystical north, <clears throat> ceaseless summer bays the land in everlasting glare. The boundaries between day and night melt away, leaving the inhabitants forever in entangled in the riddle of time. Is it night, reality, or dream? Now, that's how Stefan Sarpane would present his latest watch, The Midnight Sun. Uh, which came out at the end of 2023. It's tribute to the phenomenon known only by people who reside close to the Arctic Circle when the sun doesn't set in the summer months. The watch not only draws inspiration from the moment of the year, but also addresses the issue of the day and night differentiation with an additional 24-hour complication. The case is a classic for the brand from Finland and has an architectural uh, scallop design with its 42 millimeter case made from Otokumpu, Otokumpu stainless steel, which comes from Finland. Uh, the crown is as often positioned at four o'clock and screws down through a hundred meters water resistance. All this metal, all the metal look uh, continues to the uh, Moonbridge Bracer, which was a recent, which was recently produced by Stefan. The dial is once again where the magic happens on Stefan's watches, and the Southern Southern Midnight Sun has two distinct personalities. During the day, it's a multi-layered steel dial that feels typically Southern Ava, with a succession of layers and open work plates. Uh, complex shapes and multiple references to the moon, stars, and cosmos. The central two-tone hand, uh, finished beautifully, displays the hour, minutes, and seconds. And because of the need to differentiate night from day, Stefan has added an in-house 24-hour complication at 11 o'clock next to the moon face. At night, the expansive use of superluminova reveals a warm and poetic look in the orange, blue, and white, eight different hands applied uh, superluminova colors are used. Inside is a modified Crode P10003 caliber automatic movement with 60 hours power reserve, wound by a neighbor moon face rosa. It's limited to 20 pieces and is priced at 19,000 euros before taxes. Do you think that's a good price, Abdul? Uh, before they were uh, awarded the GPHG award from a couple of years, they were uh, not at that price range. They had really uh, under 10 grand, but you couldn't find them uh, as well in the second hand market uh, that much, especially with this case shape. Um, yeah, I think for the uniqueness of it, I, I wouldn't pay that much money for it, to be honest, but I really like the this this moon face uh, face, uh, this this. Uh, Aztec look faced on, on, on the dial and the, his use of loom on the dial is just excellent. It's amazing, isn't it? When you see it loomed at night, I mean, the loom is on the, the picture on the right hand side and, uh, the, when it's in during the day, that's on the left. It just looks stunning. His work is amazing. Yeah, undoubtedly. You got any opinions on this JCB? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, looking at with the loom, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, there's such a difference between night and day, right? 
Um, not sure sort of how I feel about the, you know, sort of the case and the bracelet. Like it's a bit, um, like it's, it's cool, but it's probably a bit too cool for me. Like it's a bit avant-garde, I think, for my mm -hmm. taste, but yeah. I can appreciate it. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think overall the pieces, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's something I would buy, but I can certainly appreciate it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Helmut saying he prefers one with the big owl, which is great too. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what that one's. Another one you mean, Helmut? Yeah. Yeah, the, the one that we discussed yesterday, Tom, we were, we, had, we were discussing between two, and that's the other one we were discussing between them. Yeah, we didn't know which one to pull up. There's this uh, this one, which is the um, put on its name now, Midnight Sun, and there's the other one with the owl on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. both uh, released last year, I think. Um, but yeah, big fan of Sapnova's um, loom painting, hand painted loom. I think he paints the loom 20 times or something like that to get the uh, mm. effect. But uh, yeah, definitely amazing stuff. Are you typing an email or something, Jonathan? Yes. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, I'll just move on to another sap and over. Um, related, uh, watch and this one is an MBNF and Sarpanova Moon Machine, which links nicely. I'll just play the video. Yeah, this is moon moon phase is so unique with this face. It's it's so cool. Wow. Yeah, I agree. When when you see this particular moon face, you you know exactly which watches you're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And it's even 2018, this watch. It, it just went under the radar somehow. I never saw it before. Yeah, good catch, Tom. I have a display yeah. as well. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man, look at that machine. That's amazing. So it's nice. freaking amazing. Yeah, from, from all the watches uh, that we talked about today, if I had to choose one with no budget, I would take this one with eyes closed, to be honest. Yeah, same. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, so this is one of the foundation ideas of the uh, MBNF has always been to have friends involved in the creation of new pieces. Alan Silberstein on the HM1 and LM1, Moser and Donaldson on the Legacy Machines too. Oh, the uh, participation of Caribou Slane in, in the decoration of the Legacy Machine um, movements. Another collaboration on was on the Moon Machine using the HM5 as a base. And uh, Stephen yeah. uh, added his famous yeah. complication. Mm -hmm. for, uh, for round two, they collaborated to create the Moon Machine 2, this time based on the Horolog Trigal Machine 8. The HM8 wow. was based on MBNF signature vertical display of time placed perpendicularly on the movement. And the direct homage to the 1970s models by Jared Perigo, Amida, Bulova, and Mido, these pieces are often called driver's watches because there's no need to lift your wrist from the steering wheel to read the time. 
Uh, this display was introduced on the HM5 and later used on the HMX. A, model, a module materializes the uh, hours and minutes on the bidirectional overlapping disks, rotating horizontally over the movements. Uh, the hours and minutes are displayed vertically thanks to high tech sapphire prisms. In the case of the HM8, it was inspired by racing cars on one side with an aerodynamic bodywork design of this uh, piece with its roll bars riveted to the case, and the HM3 had an inverted movement exposed under the sapphire crystal with the rust on the top of the movement. So, on to the Moon Machine 2. Same team, same inspiration, same concept, different result. Uh, it's a complex watch with both visually and technically. The HMA featured two design icons of the horological machine collection, the battle axe rotor and the heads-up time display, first seen on the HM5. The moon machine had the third one, the signature moon face by Stefan Zabaneva, might sound like a lot of features, various textures, several layers and levels, an intriguing display. Yes, it all blends together perfectly. So what's changed uh, compared to the HM8? First and foremost, the addition of the moon phase complication. The moon machine 2 relies on the same mechanism used to uh, display the time, glass, which is glass prisms, to highlight the virtual visual impact of a moon disk appearing in a space too small and fully contained yet the projection is accomplished via an optical prism which refracts the hours minutes and moon disks to appear as if they are perpendicular to that engine the prism is cut to magnify the hours and minutes by 20 percent for greater legibility but not for the moon phase display which is at risk of distortion if magnified and uh, the incorporation of the moon complication means that the case is uh 0.5 mil thicker than uh, to accommodate the traditional mechanism and features and a pusher on the side to correct the age of the moon. The second difference between the HMA and Moon Machine 2 is the rotor. The battle axe rotor has been transformed into an open work radial web of titanium echoing the designs of Stefan Savanava and uh, this band is also found on the surface of the movement in the sapphire crystal pane framing the tops of the Moon Machine 2 engine. Three of the signature Sarpanava moon faces can be found on the watch. Two on the disc to display the moon phase and one on the top of the winding motor. Each is made of gold and finished by hand. Three versions of the watch were available in 2018. One in full titanium with white gold moons and a light blue sky. One in black and titanium with white gold moons and a dark blue sky and one in red gold, containing with red gold moons and an anthracite sky. Each was a limited edition of 12 pieces, with prices at the time ranging from 88,000 Swiss francs before taxes for the titanium versions to 95,000 Swiss francs before taxes for the red gold version. And the movement was developed from a Gerald Perigo based calibre uh, with the moon phase complication by Stefan Sarpaneva. It was automatic and had 42 hours power reserve. So, uh, are we fans of this one? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, big, big yeah. fan of this, big this exact one. So nice. I mean, that's the HMA. You can see the, the ropes are yeah. really different. Yeah. Didn't, didn't, didn't have the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, and that's, it's, that's, that's how it's, nice uh, it's very difficult to project the additional moon phase on mm -hmm. on this uh, kind of display. Yeah. I'm just got me there, just to, in the middle of the hours. Mm -hmm. Really, it does look like a, a super car on the wrist. Like a, yeah, yeah, Porsche GT3 RS or something like this with these. Uh, really nice one. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that one. But 
big fan of M B and F in general. Um, yeah. yeah. There's there's not much from M B and F that you wouldn't have really. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us, Rob D. Thanks, Rob. Good night. Take care. Yeah, how, how many piece, how many more pieces you got to go through, Thomas? Oh, oh just one. Okay, cool. So uh, save the best until last, really. For me, this is the best. Uh, for a lot of people, it's probably the MBNF, but this is the record breaker, the world record holder, and it's the Andrea Stra Luna Exact. Um, I met Andrew Stern and saw his walk in uh, Ireland last September and his explanation about it was fan fascinating. The phase of the moon display in Lunar Exact deviates by one day from average mean moon in 2,060,707 day years. Sorry. And it holds a Guinness Book World Record for that position. Phase of the moon can be set and read extremely accurately to three hours thanks to a patented vernier scale on the dial. The phase of the moon have always been had a great meaning for many, uh, many marking as I explained at the beginning of the show the height and tide, the height of the tide, sowing and harvesting. It all depends on the phase of the moon. Historically, the phases of the moon are. In fact, the basis of every calendar, originally each of the four four phases of the moon, i.e. the uh, new moon, waxing half moon, full moon and waning half moon, determine the du duration of a week. All four phases of the moon are one full cycle of the moon determined almost in the length of the month. All these facts uh, make the phase of the moon an interesting and popular indication on a wristwatch. Ideally, such a phase of the moon indication should not deviate from the actual phase of the moon to be easy and to read and set and also indicate the precise age of the moon. Precise phase of the moon indications deviate from synodic or mean moon by one day after a couple of hundred years and under Andreas Schroeder's phase of the moon after two million years. As I mentioned this, he won the Sorte Alun Perpetual and entry in the Guinness Book of World Records. However, the phase of the moon indications have a common problem. As precise as they may be, they cannot be read very precisely, except a new moon and full moon, and the wearer of the watch has to guess what exact phase or age of the moon is. Also, the exact setting of the moon phase indication is only possible at a new moon and full full moon. Andrea Strauss solution presents the first precise phase of the moon indication, which can be read with a precision of three hours at any time, and not only every fortnight. Thanks to his patented mechanism, this high-precision moon age indication gives the age of the moon in days and further increments to three hours. By age, I'm referring to over time over a year. And in, position, in addition to the patented moon age indication, the lunar exacts also, as Andrea Strauss patented Remensoir de Galte, conven conventionally a complication known as a force constant or constant fold. It acts on the escape wheel. However, this uh, this is a point of the whole movement where the least torque is present. For this reason, Andrea Strauss Remensoir is attached to the second wheel or fourth wheel. This solution has the advantage that the complete escapement, including the escapement wheel, oscillates free from any influence between the individual impulses delivered by the remontoire, hence the Swiss anchor escapement forms without influence from the remontoire and its precision perfected over the last 200 years. The movement of this watch is manly wound and has 78 hours power reserves, it's skeletonized, and the case is red gold, uh, and when launched in 2016, it cost 112,000 uh, Swiss francs. Uh, 30 meters water resistant, 41 mil thick, and 10, 41 millimeters by 10 mil thick. And as I said, it's got a skeletonized dial. I absolutely love this watch. I'm in love with it. 
um as i say i saw it in ireland and it's just a just a beautiful watch when you talk to andrea Estrella about it it is just uh just fa fascinating to hear about it and uh the fact what's the what's the color what's the dial at the bottom is that the calendar that's the moon phase oh that one there oh, i thought okay yeah yeah it's like an exact moon phase right it's like a, yeah uh, okay okay that's what it, i thought it was just <laughs> i thought it's it was called, just the, the bit on the, the aperture on the left with the actual it's called, with the the, blue it's called the vernier scale okay in a vernier ring it increases the accuracy of the indication to three hours okay gotcha gotcha okay so cool. it's uh, Yeah. yeah, pretty cool. So I, re I really like that one. Yeah, it's really nice. But I, w I would take the Sarapeneva Sar MBNF any day <laughs> of the week. Yeah. We yeah, also do. Love the case and crown. Got the rest and put something else in. <laughs> oh, we've got a uh, Y2K. Oh, it's gone. We had Y2K. Love the case. Yeah. <laughs> Got the rest and put something else in. Uh, I maybe the blue, maybe the blue and yellow, um, like it doesn't. Just that color doesn't sort of fit with all of the rest of the color scheme on the watch. It might just stand out a little bit. I don't know. How do you feel about that, Thomas? Like, do you, do you like that? Is that a thing that you like about the watch? Or would you change it? Or what do you think about that? I just love the fact that it's accurate to over 2 million years. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I'm just talking about the... Just the, the aesthetics as well, though. Hey, Y2K, you're muted. Yeah, I don't okay. want to interrupt the conversation because I'm actually still on the road. <laughs> Good to see you, though, man. No, I finished. Good to see you, buddy. That, that, that was it. That was it for Earth, the watches I got lined up. That, that was my favorite one, I think, just because I've actually seen it and held it and tried it on and met, mm -hmm. met the maker. Um, he makes really thin watches too. I imagine that watch yeah. is quite thin. It's probably Hi, like no... How are you doing? I'm alive and kicking. Yeah. Just Good. finished ah, the ah. dinner with the in laws. So my missus is hanging at mum's. I'm headed back home right now. So Happy Chinese New Year. Yeah. Have actually, a great one, buddy. <laughs> you're not until um Next weekend, which is mm. the tenth, yeah. is it? Yeah. I missed what's checked it today. I don't know if anybody can see. It's just wearing my TSO PRX myself. Yeah. Nice. The full the full gold edition, aka the uh, with the waffle dial. Yeah. Bill says uh, they're coming for you, Thomas. They're coming for you, Thomas. You want me here to see if it is in fact accurate. Don't get what you're on about, Bill. Sorry. <laughs> I think so. You're not going to live. You're not going to live to two million years, Thomas, to be able to tell. Oh, right, it's right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, they're coming for me. Anyway, it's getting it's getting to one AM yep. here, guys. I'm gonna jump off and uh, I'll leave yeah. you guys to it. Take great. care, mate. Yeah, take, care, take mate. Care. Yeah, great, great time. time. Watches that you pulled up there, and um, it's good to chat. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you next time. See you later, JCB. Yeah, so that was a really. Fellas, um, thanks for joining us all in the chat. And uh, Orange Hand, my friend, great to see you. 
Hey, Orange. Morning. Good morning, my friend. Hope you can catch the replay. Practical complication for a werewolf, the moon phase. He summed it up, all, he summed it up, the, up the whole show in a perfect comment there. The moon phase is a practical complication for a werewolf. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. That's why we love you, Iron Chan. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Julie Bench says, Cheers, Tom Panel, <laughs> and even JQH. <laughs> 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 Cheers, Julie. Uh, Bill says, Goodbye, JCB. Yeah, it's great to see him. Great to see him today. Hey, JCB, you're driving on the wrong side of the road. I'm just saying. Why you can <laughs> Yeah, sir. Great show. Thanks, sir, for joining us. I'm driving the right side of the road. Oh, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> you should try the other one. <laughs> Got <Yeah>. to be fun. <laughs> I'm waiting Thanks. for JQH to import me a left hand drive vehicle then. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Thanks to uh, Abdul. Thanks to JCB. Thanks to Jonathan. And uh, Y2K. Hope you have a safe journey home. Yes, I will be. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed what we did, guys, give us a thumbs up, please. It would be appreciated. And if you're not subscribed to the invitation, subscribe if you enjoy what we do here. And... Uh, Join us in a fortnight for the next one. And, uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you in the chat or enjoy the replay. You, and, um, enjoy the replay if you if it's a bit too early for you in America. Uh, but yeah, always enjoy doing this for you. Always enjoy seeing you in the chat and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks everybody in the chat. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. Take care, guys.